June 12, 2018, 2.58 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time June 12, 2018, 2.58 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time It began with a single play. Michael Owen slalom threw half of Argentina's defense on the way to a goal that would lead England to another World Cup heartbreak, but me to an affection that has endured 20 years. That play did it for me. I was an England fan from then on. It began with a single play. You can see it on YouTube, if you haven't already. Michael Owen slalom threw half of Argentina's defense on the way to a goal that would lead England to another World Cup heartbreak, but me to an affection that has endured 20 years. That play did it for me. I was an England fan from then on, World Cup, even without U.S., American fans can rise to challenge so even though the United States will not be included at Russia 2018, its first World Cup absence in a generation, I still have a team. You are welcome to share in my misery. The party starts Monday, with a 2 p.m. game against Tunisia. History indicates this will not be a rager, and it will not last long. I've gone to some extraordinary lengths to pursue my England obsession. In 2004, the European Championship was only available in the U.S. as a pay-per-view product. It was one flat price for the entire tournament. But I'd scheduled my vacation for the first week, which included a huge game between England and France. So what could I do? I paid the $150, set my TV for the game and didn't look at a newspaper sports section for seven days. When my wife and I got back from California, she went to bed and I stayed up and watched the England-France game on a very tape-delayed basis. And what did I watch? David Beckham getting snuffed on a penalty kick that would have given England a 2-0 lead. Emil Heskey committing a pointless foul near the box with Patrick Vieira about to be covered by two defenders, leading to a Zinedine Zidane free kick goal that tied it in extra time. David James fouling Thierry Henry two minutes later just in front of goal, leading to Zidane's penalty kick winner. In Cancun on vacation in September 2005, I took a bus downtown to watch an England-Northern Ireland qualifier in an outdoor tent with little venting and 15 rows filled with lubed-up England fans. My wife had a spa day. Given that England lost that dreadful game 1-0, I'm sure her afternoon was more relaxing. When home, I paid to watch pretty much every England qualifier until PPV no longer was a thing. That include the nightmare against Croatia in 2007, when Steve McLaren arrogantly left David Beckham out of the starting lineup and the opposition scored twice in the first 20 minutes. Bex came on at the break and helped generate two goals to tie the game. A draw was all England needed to advance to Euro 2008. Alas, the English conceded in the 77th minute and missed the tournament. That might have been the most devastating loss. More, World Cup opening ceremony, what you need to know even more so than when Beckham kicked Argentina's Diego Simeone after being fouled in that 98 World Cup game and was red carded, leaving England to labor on with 10 men. Even more so than when Beckham lifted a penalty over the crossbar during a shootout that led to England's elimination from Euro 2004. Even more so than when Wayne Rooney committed a similar blunder at Germany 2006, stamping his foot in Ricardo Carvalho's crotch after a foul in midfield. Rooney was England's best player then, and when he was shown red the quarterfinal against Portugal wound up 0-0 and was lost in penalties. Even more so than the 0-0 draw and penalty shootout loss to Italy in the quarters of Euro 2012. This is England fandom, costly and painful. It was awkward in 2010.
the United States and England not only were grouped together at the World Cup, they opened against each other. It was awkward, but not difficult. England was not going to be the choice there. But I was enough of a fan that when England played Algeria six days later, when I was on a birthday trip to New York, I planned to avoid learning the final score and watch ESPN's midnight re-airing. While in line at the TKTS booth for Broadway show tickets, I caught a newsboard behind me flashing the final score, 0-0, zero zero, not because I was stupid enough to look at it, but because the reflection appeared in the glass in front of me. I watched the game anyway. I finally got to see England play in person when I was sent to cover the 2014 World Cup in Brazil, and one of the matches I was assigned was England vs. Uruguay and Sao Paulo. England tied the game on a goal by Rooney in the 75th minute and it looked like the team would make it to the third match of group play with a solid chance to advance. Then Steven Gerrard handled a goal kick by Uruguay's Fernando Mislera with a header near midfield. Curiously, it deflected backward, traveling toward Uruguay striker Luis Suarez and launching him on a break for the winning goal. More, World Cup predictions, odds, team breakdowns given that I've never paid for a ticket to watch the team play, never really been in position to do so, in some, per capita, way I've probably spent more money on England fandom than any other team I follow. And I've got less to show for it, given its series of major tournament calamities. I'm still at it, though. The generation of players that drew me to England, Gerard, Beckham, Scholes, Ferdinand and, of course, Owen, is long gone. The current squad, led by Tottenham's Del Alley and Harry Kane, seems not to have the same degree of individual talent. But they fit together, apparently not as burdened to wear the three lions crest. Maybe I'm setting myself up for another operatic defeat. That's what Owen's goal did to me. But I can look at it over and over.